Hi friends, it's Nathan and welcome back to my channel. I'm currently finishing my online term at Harvard, but come January, so in less than a month's time, I'll be starting my first year of pharmacy school at the University of Waterloo. It's December, which means it's deadline season, exams are quickly approaching, and it's just a time of stress. So I thought I'd launch a subject series to share with you the specific things that I did to get an A in my subjects with today's video being on chemistry. I'm also gonna do a video on biology and English as well. Those are two courses that I've also done very well in and have taken all throughout my educational career. So definitely stay tuned if that interests you. But essentially I'm gonna be going over what I did in high school and in university. And depending on the level of student you are, you can take what's applicable. But without further ado, let me show you how I got an A in chemistry and how you can too. This is The very first step is to pre-read and highlight your course notes or lecture slides. You should be annotating during your lecture, making definition sheets, summarizing information into tables when applicable, especially for a course like organic chemistry. You should be grouping similar mechanisms together so that you can easily refer back to when needed. I have a video on how to take notes depending on the subject because Note-taking is not a one-size-fits-all system, and I did a very comprehensive rundown of how to do it for chemistry, so if you're interested, you can click the link above. I'll link it right here. Both in high school and university, my main focus during class was to write down every single thing that the teacher or prof wrote down. Chemistry is a very complex subject with a lot of steps, and you don't want to be missing any of them because you're going to go back and you're not going to know what's happening. So just write down everything. Just focus on getting all the information down. And I'll be honest, during class, I would be around 60% lost. So really, I was only understanding 40% of what was going on. And one, that's because I was focused on writing everything down. But two, I'm not a student that just understands concepts like that. It takes a lot of work for me to finally get something. So once the lecture is done, I need to go home, review it, consolidate it, and just really let it marinate in my mind in order to understand something. So I'm just letting you know that it's perfectly normal to be really confused during class. Truthfully, that's how chemistry works. Majority of the learning takes place, not in the classroom, but when you're at home practicing. Since high school and university are now online, students are being asked to work and submit their homework lab reports and assignments digitally. For my organic chemistry lab reports, I had to type out my text, but also draw my diagrams and mechanisms and then submit it all as a PDF. And that was a very foreign process to me. And I know working digitally to this extent is a very foreign process to many of you as well. And that's why I wanna tell you about Foxit who has kindly sponsored today's video. Foxit is a leading company that provides innovative PDF products and services. They want to make remote learning possible and allow every student, regardless of device, to work, create, and edit digital documents. As I said, the lab report process was very confusing now that it was all digital, and I want to show you how easy Foxit made the process. My introduction and procedure has to be handwritten and then converted into a PDF. I wrote out my intro on a lined sheet of paper. I'm going to use Foxit's PDF Reader mobile app to scan my document and it converts it as a PDF already. I'll open the app, tap to start, and you just start scanning away. And then you have all your sheets as a PDF. I also have worksheets that need to be completed for my lab reports, and in that case, I'm gonna use the Foxit Phantom PDF online. So the first thing on this worksheet is that I need to draw the structures of valeric acid and caprylic acid. Now the great thing about Foxit is you can add and drop images super easily, so I'm just gonna draw out the structures. I'm gonna take a picture with my phone. My two acids are uploaded onto my computer now, so I'm just gonna paste them in. Select my first acid and paste it in. Select my second acid and paste it in. And then I'm just gonna scroll down and answer my questions. So I finished typing out my fantastic answers and here is my finished worksheet. Now that I'm done, I'm just going to save and download. And there I have it. My worksheet in a PDF format, ready for submission, ready to get those A's. 
Foxit's PDF Reader mobile app and Phantom PDF Online is free with limited features. However, Foxit has been so generous to give me a code to share with you all so that you can have full featured access. The code along with the links to the app and the online platform is in the description box below. Definitely utilize the tool in your lab reports as well as any other school related tasks. Thank you Foxit for working with me and of course helping me get through all those lab reports. Which brings us to homework. So before attempting your homework problems, Go over the lesson again and review it. Make sure you understand everything that went on that day. Look at every step and make sure you understand how you got from line one to line two and finally the answer. Fully understand everything, then you can start doing the practice problems. Also, do all the problems that your teacher or prof assigns you. They assign them for a reason and yes, it's going to be a lot, but you need repetition in order to get chemistry. It's practice, practice, practice. I always bought a 200 page notebook, double sided, that was dedicated solely to practice problems. And by the end of the year, it was pretty much filled. Let me see if I can actually find it for you. So I got my notebook and like I said, it's 200 pages. Honestly, okay, look, it's just example after example. And also make sure that you're marking your questions. I know this sounds obvious, but I found out that not everyone does it. And it's like, what? Like, how are you supposed to know if you're doing a question right or wrong, if you're not marking it. Honestly, it takes time for sure, but go through it and that's so important to the process. There's no point in doing questions blindly. So go through them, see which ones you got wrong, correct them, and if you can't correct them, if you don't know where you went wrong, mark the number down and go to your teacher the next day. After a night of homework, I would go to school the next day and show my teacher my notebook to show that I actually did attempt the question, but I didn't get it. And I would ask them, can you go over this question with me? If you're super confused, ask them to physically do the question on the board and let you follow along so that you can see the process or you can do it yourself on the board and let the teacher watch you do it and see where you got wrong. In high school, specifically grade 12 chem, I saw my teacher so often. It was borderline excessive. And if you guys are in grade 12 chem right now, you know how intense it is. Like the jump from grade 11 to grade 12 is insane. But I'm honestly so glad that I did because if I didn't see my teacher after class all those times, there was no way I would have understood it to the extent that I did. I never once thought that I was annoying or dumb, rather I was a student that genuinely cared and wanted to do well in his studies. And teachers like that. Teachers appreciate students that have a passion. So I'm not playing to favoritism, but I'm just letting you know that teachers do like when you care. Studying is to repeatedly do questions. That's pretty much your bulk of studying. And you're gonna keep at those questions until you can confidently answer them without looking at your notes, without struggling too hard, without getting confused. I have a whole video on how to study for different subjects depending on whether the course is content-based or problem-based. Chemistry is a problem-based course, so you'll find all the tips you need in that section of the video, which is linked above again. I also found watching people doing mechanisms to be very helpful. A lot of the times your textbook just shows you kind of the step-by-step, -step, but when you watch someone, you can really see the thought process, and that just made it a lot clearer, especially for those trickier or more complex mechanisms. Lastly, do past papers if you have them available. Past papers are essential in seeing what kind of questions are being asked, how the questions are being asked, the format that the exam is gonna be, and also the time, the speed that you need to be working on your questions in order to finish the exam on time. With chemistry, you know, a question can take two minutes or it can take 10 minutes. You may be doing your exam and you're down to two more questions and you have 10 minutes on the clock and you're like, okay, great, I can do this. And then you realize the last two questions, one of them is a titration calculation and the other is a mechanism with eight steps. And now you realize you're screwed. So definitely practice with test papers, practice the speed at which you're doing questions, get into the habit of recognizing certain questions. So once you see a question, you know, okay, that's asking me for a titration, I need to start that ASAP. When I was first introduced to exams, I found it very difficult for me to finish on time just because there was so much content on an exam and so many questions. So I really had to just practice doing questions quickly, but also accurately. One last thing about studying is that I am a very independent studier. I usually always study alone. However, for chemistry, it did help me when I studied with a couple friends and I'm really gonna emphasize a couple. So just maybe two people, not a whole group of seven people. That is not a study group, that's a party, but 
just having another person there that you can ask questions to, that you can consolidate your learning. And one thing that I really loved about these study sessions was that when we had a question that none of us got, we had a whiteboard and we would work out the question together and really just input, okay, this is the next step, wait, no, this is the mechanism, and just really collaborate and figure out the answer as a collective. Chemistry is the only subject that I studied with friends and even when I did study with friends it was only maybe around 20% of the time at the end of my study schedule so after learning everything after practice everything and just really nailing down those tough questions. Now on to test taking. Now I believe that there are strategies for test taking. Sorry a weird car just pulled up in my driveway. Anyways um, I believe there are strategies with test taking and I think studying you know, you can do all that you can before the test and that's great, but during that test you need to also have a game plan. With chemistry your format is mainly going to be solving questions, multiple choice, and short answer. In high school you'll probably have more short answer, in university you're going to have more multiple choice and that's pretty much because it's very difficult to mark the responses of 400 students, instead a scantron is used. So let's talk about solving questions first. When you're solving questions, make sure that you are showing all your steps. I can't emphasize how important this is. It might take an extra few minutes, but those few minutes are worth it. In high school, it's all about the thought process and about the foundational understanding. They're not as hung up on the final answer. They really want you to understand what you're doing. And you know, if you do get the wrong answer, but all your steps follow, then it's not that big of a deal. The final answer is really only worth one or two marks. The six mark question, the bulk of it is showing your work. So make sure you're showing every single step. Another little trick that I did is that if you are just not getting the right numbers, like you don't know why, you know how to do the question, you've seen it before, you've done it a million times, but these numbers just aren't adding up. Something isn't right, but you know the process, write down that process in words. I kid you not, this is honestly one of like the greatest tricks because the examiner will read it and see, okay, this person knows what he's doing, he's just not getting the right numbers. And they may or may not give you a mark, but at least you wrote something down. You know, if your numbers aren't adding up, it's the most frustrating thing. You can get really, really anxious about that because it's like, oh, nothing's working. But at least have something down, at least have something to show your understanding is better than nothing. And you possibly may get part marks. I don't know how lenient um, your teacher will be, but it's definitely worth a try and it's what I did when necessary. On the other hand, in university, the questions that require solving will be in a multiple choice format, meaning the work that you show will not be counted, all they want is the final answer. Okay, you may be thinking, oh wow, this is so great, it's multiple choice. No, not really, because sometimes you do make a calculation error, sometimes you do point the arrow the wrong way and then you get confused with your mechanism and you have nothing to show for that. Even though you're not getting marked on your work, still show it because when you show your work and you don't skip steps, it ensures a higher accuracy, right? That's obvious. Because the question only gives you one mark and it's one mark for the right answer, it's even more important that you get the right answer, okay? Other than that, you just get a big fat zero on the question and that's not fun. Now for short answer questions, this is where they would probably test you on theories and applications. If the question is allocated for four marks, give five points. Chemistry is a very technical discipline and a lot of the times the examiner or teacher is looking for very specific wording, very specific explanations, and sometimes it can be hard for you to hit those points. Maybe you do hit the points but it's even unclear so then you get your marks deducted. So by having an extra point, that is your backup. So let's say your point was wrong or it was unclear, they could essentially mark the extra point and you would get full marks regardless. So you wrote your test and now you probably think, okay, yay, I'm done with it, never have to think about it again. You can, you know, scrap all your papers. Do not do that. Please do not throw out your papers. Once your test is marked, go review it. In high school, you get your test and your exam returned back to you, but in university, it actually has to stay with your professor, so you have to book a viewing appointment to see it. Regardless of what you have to do, make sure you look at the test and see the questions that you got wrong. This is all constructive development. You want to figure out what your weak spots are, because if this is a test, you can fix up what you're not sure about so that you can kill it on the exam. Or even if it is a final exam, chemistry is very foundational, meaning it builds up as you go in higher courses. It could come up again in your next course and you're at the same problem again. 
tackle it in that moment no matter how bad the mark is i know sometimes when a mark is really really bad you don't want to think about it but you have to especially if you did poorly and that's how you're going to improve for the next time the last thing i want to mention that was critical in my success is not something you physically do but more of a mentality and that is perseverance chemistry is such a hard course Perseverance was the backbone to everything that I said. I couldn't have pushed through the homework. I couldn't have pushed through reviewing my tests if I hadn't persevered. Shout out to grade 12 chem and second year organic chemistry for the mental breakdowns. Honestly, I've cried. I've been so anxious that my chest started to ache before a test. It's okay to struggle with chemistry. I struggled with chemistry. The person beside you in the library is struggling with chemistry. It's a hard subject. But through it all, I persevered and I knew that doing poorly was not an option. I knew I had to be successful in chemistry in order to get into pharmacy school. That was my reason. Let's be real, no one takes chemistry for fun. There's definitely way more enjoyable courses, but you need to find your motivator, right? Find your reason. Why are you taking this course? What is this course gonna lead you to that you want so badly? And let that fuel you. Take that and just run with it. And I promise you, I promise you that it will all work out. And that is everything I did to get an A in chemistry. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and let me know how you're finding chemistry, whether you're in high school or university, taking physical, analytical, inorganic, organic, whatever chemistry you're taking, let me know. Uh, I respond to every single comment. If you want more academic content, I will be filming biology and English next. So stay tuned for that. Hit the notification if you don't want to miss it. There's not much time left before the semester ends and I really want you guys to know these tips so you can get the best possible mark. I really want you guys to know these tips and tricks so that you can get the best possible mark. Lastly, if you want more personal day-to-day -day content, you can follow my Instagram. But that's it for me and I will see you friends in the next video. Bye.